Mars, the planet we've dreamed about for generations. It's red, cold, and silent, yet for decades it's been seen as our next big step. But as we prepare to send humans there, scientists are warning about a fatal flaw, a problem so severe it could destroy any hope of a permanent human colony. So what's the truth about Mars in 2025? And are we really ready for it? The first challenge hits before we even touch down. Mars is about 140 million miles away, and depending on orbital alignment, a one-way trip can take between six and nine months. Astronauts would spend that entire time exposed to cosmic radiation, solar storms, and isolation unlike anything experienced before. Without Earth's magnetic field, spacecraft shielding becomes the only defense. NASA is testing hydrogen-rich materials and water-based shielding layers, but the weight makes it nearly impossible to launch enough protection. Even before we reach Mars, our bodies will already be suffering radiation damage, bone loss, and weakened immunity. Landing on Mars sounds simple compared to what happens next. The thin atmosphere, made up of 95% carbon dioxide, is less than 1% the density of Earth's. That means parachutes barely work, and the heat shield must absorb a brutal descent through a thin but fast-moving layer of gas. Once on the surface, the view is breathtaking. A dusty orange horizon, enormous mountains, and valleys carved by ancient rivers. But the reality is deadly. Temperatures can swing from a comfortable 20 degrees Celsius during the day to minus 100 degrees Celsius at night. Without a protective suit, your blood would boil and freeze within seconds due to the low pressure. The biggest issue, however, is that Mars is missing something essential, a magnetic field. Billions of years ago, Mars once had one, just like Earth. But when its molten core cooled, the magnetic shield disappeared, allowing solar winds to strip away most of the atmosphere. That's why Mars is now dry, frozen, and bombarded by radiation. Even underground shelters won't fully protect future colonists from long-term exposure, which could lead to higher cancer risks and irreversible genetic damage. Dust is another nightmare. Mars is covered in fine, electrostatic dust that clings to everything. It's filled with perchlorates, toxic chemicals that can damage lungs and thyroid glands. These particles are so small they can penetrate air seals, clog machinery, and scratch helmet visors. In 2018, NASA's Opportunity rover died after a planet-wide dust storm blocked sunlight for months. Imagine that happening to a human base powered by solar panels. The dust storms can engulf the entire planet, reducing sunlight by 99% and dropping temperatures drastically. Life support systems would need backup nuclear or fusion-based energy sources just to survive. And while scientists are developing technologies like the kilopower nuclear reactor and inflatable habitats, Mars's environment works against all of them. Dust storms bury solar arrays, winds wear down habitat seals, and radiation weakens material over time. Even the low gravity, only 38% of Earth's, could have serious effects on human biology. Muscles atrophy, bones lose density, and fluid distribution in the body changes, causing vision problems and immune deficiencies. After years on Mars, coming back to Earth might not even be possible. Then there's the air, or lack of it. Mars has a surface pressure so low that water instantly evaporates. That means no lakes, no rivers, and no rain. To make breathable oxygen, NASA's MOXIE experiment on the Perseverance rover successfully extracted small amounts of oxygen from carbon dioxide, but scaling that up for hundreds of humans would require enormous energy. Even a tiny leak in a habitat could be catastrophic. One punctured wall, one damaged valve, and the thin Martian air would rush in faster than you could react. But even if we solve radiation pressure and oxygen production, Mars still presents one of its biggest problems, resources. There's no oil, no wood, no easy metals, and no life to recycle carbon or nitrogen. Everything must be imported from Earth, or created using advanced in-situ resource utilization, ISRU, systems that don't yet exist on a colony scale. To grow food, the soil must be detoxified and fertilized using human waste or synthesized nutrients. And because sunlight is weaker and often blocked by dust, 
Agriculture might rely on artificial lighting powered by reactors. Essentially, living on Mars means building an entire biosphere from scratch. Terraforming, the dream of making Mars more Earth-like, is another illusion. To rebuild the atmosphere, you'd need to release trillions of tons of greenhouse gases. NASA's 2025 simulations confirmed that even if we vaporized all the CO2 locked in Martian ice, it still wouldn't create enough air pressure or warmth to sustain life. There simply isn't enough material left. The planet is too small, its gravity too weak, and its magnetic field too dead. That's the fatal flaw. Mars can't hold an atmosphere. No matter what we do, it will keep leaking into space. So what about underground colonies? They're one of the few realistic ideas that might work. Scientists plan to use natural lava tubes, massive tunnels carved by ancient volcanic activity, to shield colonists from radiation and micrometeorites. Robotic 3D printers could seal these tunnels, creating pressurized habitats protected beneath the surface. Combined with closed-loop life support systems that recycle air and water, these bases could allow long-term missions. But even then, maintaining them would require constant resupply and maintenance from Earth. A single failure in power or air circulation could wipe out everyone inside. In 2025, NASA and SpaceX are planning the next generation of Mars missions, ones that will test fuel production directly on the planet. The idea is simple. Bring hydrogen from Earth, extract carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and produce methane for rocket fuel using the Sabatier process. If it works, humans could refuel on Mars and return home. If it fails, every mission would need to carry enough fuel both ways, making large-scale colonization almost impossible. SpaceX's Starship program aims to deliver up to 100 tons of cargo per flight, but even with multiple launches, establishing a self-sustaining base would take decades. The cost, complexity, and human risk remain enormous. Radiation-resistant materials, self-repairing systems, and autonomous robotics will all be essential. And we're not quite there yet. So why do we keep trying? Because Mars represents more than exploration. It's survival. Earth faces its own fragile future. Climate instability, resource exhaustion, and overpopulation. If humanity can learn to live on Mars, we prove we can survive anywhere. Every challenge, 